Good morning. It's Kim Linder, your host of the Caregiver Hour radio show. Um, today is actually going to be a very exciting day. It's Tuesday, February 1st, 2011, and we're at Arden Courts, a, an assisted living memory care community here in Largo, Florida. I want to welcome you. Again, my name is Bernadette Plum, and I'm the business development specialist for Arden Courts. We'll let Dale go first. Dale is a, the author of Transitioning Your Aging Parent, a five-step guide through crisis and change. We have Kim Linda, who has been in our industry for well over eight years that I've known her, and she too is a family caregiver and has the host of the Caregiver Hour on W. HNZ, very good. Twelve fifty a.m. and is a holistic uh, coach as well. So um, I'm very excited to have them both with us today. Thanks to Arden Quartz for hosting our presentation today, and thanks to each of you for taking time out to come and share with us. I am very much like each of you. One of my key roles is that of a daughter and caregiver to my elderly mother. I wrote the book I wish I had had when my mom faced her health and life crisis. Now while this book shares a process to follow in times of crisis and change, it's also very much focused on strengthening personal and family relationships. I just want to briefly share my story so you get some context for why I wrote my book and the information I, I included in it. My mother was living alone in her home of 30 years in Maryland. And I got a call from out of the blue. It was a call I never expected to receive. My mom's friend said, your mother's had what they believe was a stroke. She's on her way to the hospital, and we don't know how much longer she has left to live. When I hung up the phone, I just felt as if I was in a tailspin. There really was no one to turn to. My brother had just left on a two-week vacation and was unreachable. I had no knowledge of geriatric health care, senior living options, all I knew about were nursing homes from many years ago, and I had no knowledge of community resources. So I first realized I had to gain an understanding of the situation, understand what needed to be done, and also importantly, to engage the right people to help me. I called my best friend of 50 years. She happened to work in a hospital near my mother. She was a tremendous resource. I called my mom's specialist at Johns Hopkins University. He had no idea my mother's condition was deteriorating. So I got him with her primary care physician to coordinate care. And I called my mom's church. They had been a great help to us 20 years before when my father was at end of life. And they immediately stepped up and connected me with people. Well, the good news is my mother did not have a stroke. My mother's happier and healthier than my brother and I have ever seen her. She decided to move to a senior living community in Maryland, and she has just come alive. So that was part of my impetus to write the book. I wanted to share with other adult children who were going to face the same kind of crisis and change that we helped my mom through. I want to thank Rose for having us here today and, and the team that put this together. We talked about really recharging, and that's um, sometimes taking a walk, uh, sometimes journaling. For me, it was um, doing some yoga. Uh, I couldn't, I didn't have the energy to go to an exercise class and start lifting weights and jogging, but I could take a walk. So again, really listen to what your body is is saying to you to make the next move to recharge yourself. We also um, we've talked about circle of care for your parent, but who's your circle of care? Who do you look for to help support you? Because your circle may be different than your parent's circle or your spouse's circle. Well, that circle is someone for you to intentionally make a list of who those people are. Those people help you remain connected to who you are, bring you joy, nurture you, embrace your new normal. All right, I'm going to take a drink of water for this one. One of the things I was having difficulty was really accepting how my in-laws were changing. It was happening rapidly. And so again, I went into that, that fix-it mode. I wasn't in denial. I could see it. But, you know, how do I fix it? Who do I get in? I, I got a geriatric care manager to help understand some things. I went for help. I went to support groups. And that really did help me see that the new normal as difficult as it is, it is what it is, and I need to face that, and I need to make some adjustments, and I need to start accepting 
what is happening in my life. Accepting the new normal is really allowing yourself to be in the present. I wasn't in the past, I wasn't in the future, I was in the moment. And so I would really appreciate these moments with my mother-in-law, these conversations. I'd have lunch with her at the facility and be able to really enjoy it and realize this was going to be a spe very special moment for me. Or even with my father-in-law, maybe he needed me to get hit. We took him to a baseball game. He's a Phillies fan, and the Phillies were having a World Series here. And we took him to the game, and I knew that was only, you know, most likely going to be the last time he was going to see a baseball game. But I was really able to embrace the new normal, and it ended up making a lot of sense for me.